Got the boy. <coughs> Diallo, sure. thank you for coming hey, through. Hey, good to see you again. Welcome back to the show. Thanks for, for having another... me back. Today we're talking about Jack Johnson. My man. I mean, ahead. you can draw a line from Jack Johnson to Miles Davis, Muhammad Ali, Huey P. Newton, Malcolm X, NWA, Public Enemy, Biggie mm. Smiley. I mean, Jack Johnson is the beginning of that. Yeah. Um, here's a cat who was excellent at, you know, his craft, the sport of boxing. Sweet science. Um, who was clean, and he let you know how clean he was, who, you know, cars and, uh, you know, women and the whole swag yeah. and that whole thing that, you know, hip-hop, like, branded yeah. in videos in the 90s, Jack Johnson was doing back in the early 20th century. Turn of the century. Yeah. Before yeah. there was a rapper, he was the first rapper. You know, you're talking, like, 40 years after the end of the Civil War. Like, yeah. Like, and here's this guy, this black guy, who's boxing. It's legal for him to beat people's ass with his hands. Yeah. But boxing, like everything else, was segregated. You know, yeah. black fighters weren't allowed to fight white fighters, but Johnson made his way up through the battle royals. That's where Jack Johnson came from, from that culture. Tell us what the battle royals were. Battle royals were, they were jacked up. You know, yeah. they'd get a bunch of black guys, and they'd blindfold them. And, you know, many times they'd be in just their underwear and their drawers, as they say down south, blindfolded, and they'd put them in the middle of a ring, and, you know, they'd tell them to fight. And white guys would bet money and drink beer and laugh and cavort, and, you know, and it was a show, and the guy who, like, ended up Still um, standing. Still standing when it was all said and done got, like, a nickel lynched. or something. You, you got know? lynched. Sounds like a tragedy. Or a YouTube yes, very opportunity. Much so. This very is Fight much Club so. before Fight Club. A black uh, fight club black with fight white club. patrons. I was so fascinated to watch uh, Ken Burns' wonderful documentary oh, on Jack Johnson. Excellent. And it should so, be required viewing. They should show it in schools. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody I mean, the kids needs to see that. Pay attention. I but mean, Jack Johnson is, to me, Jack Johnson is the quintessential American. Yes, he is. Again, hip hop like branded so many things. Like, yeah. One way to say it would be, I don't care if we were being delicate. Another way to say it would be, I don't give a Right. F that whole concept is something I would argue Jack Johnson created. Yeah. Because here's a guy who at any moment could have been killed. For, yeah. You know, the lynchings of black people at this time at an all-time high. Mm. And here's this guy who, in spite of this, basically gave America his ass to kiss. Like, yeah. look, I'm going to be myself. I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to drive fast cars. I'm going to date white women. Yeah. I'm going to be clean. Like, I'm going to taunt you. I'm not going to be this compliant, quiet, passive. No, 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 no. You're going to deal with me. So that idea was really ahead of his time. What were Jack's politics? I, That's I'd what I was asking. Do we know anything about his political the leanings? politics of individuality. Huh. He was a... Uh... His thing was, you are not going to confine me by any stereotypical definition of what a black man should be. Mm -hmm. What Jack Johnson was about was basically, I'm going to do what the f I want to do on my own terms. Yes. Yes. And even though that sounds like egotistical, selfish, whatever, now, think about that in 1908. Clay, there must right? be something about American culture where we both really take a hard line on people who try to step outside their box. Right. But then 20 years later, 30 years later, we revere them. I saw Malcolm X on a stamp. Right. And I'm like, this is an amazing thing to have Malcolm X on a stamp. You know, because to have Muhammad Ali on a stamp. Most of my heroes don't appear on those and stamps. Somebody at the post office was like, we'll prove you wrong, Chuck exactly. D. Exactly. I, <laughs> I was actually hurt the day I went to the post office and saw the Malcolm X stamps. Because yeah. I'm like, I cannot sing that public enemy line anymore with conviction because yeah. it's no longer true. I you almost know. wonder if Malcolm X would even want that. I don't uh, think Malcolm would have wanted to be on a stamp. I don't think you he say that, but you don't. Jack Johnson would have wanted to be on a that. stamp, though. Are there people you see now, of any race, who feel like Jack Johnson, who feel like the politics of individuality? I mean, there are a lot of people that don't give a damn. Mm -hmm. But the question is, what is it that they don't give a damn about? Right. I mean, the stakes now, you know, you can do your own thing. There'll be critics, there'll be haters. There might be people who may write something negative about you, but for the most part, you don't have to worry about somebody taking your life. You True. have to, again, 
recognize wow. the fact Jack Johnson <laughs> is doing good. this when his life could have been taken at any second. Yeah. Black people's lives were being taken with record numbers yeah. at this time. And so he's doing it at a time when the stakes were much higher. So, yeah, there are always going to be rebellious people. There are always going to be people that go against the grain. Mm -hmm. There are going to be people that talk trash and do their own thing and, and push buttons. But are the stakes that high? I want to thank Dr. Boyd again for coming and hanging out with us. Thanks for watching Black History. Has anyone ever told you you look just like Charlie Chaplin? Oh my God, can you do the waddle? Do the waddle. Do it, do it. Oh! <laughs>